Hello, hello. So today we're going to continue looking at airports in detail and look at the various lighting systems present on the runway. So let's get straight into it and look at the first system, which is the runway end lights. So as you can guess from the name, these lights are built into the ends of the runway. So each end will have a row of lights which will either be red or green, depending on which angle you view them from. The red lights will face towards the centre of the runway. These are used as a warning that you are approaching the end of the runway. Remember that red lights generally mean stop. The green lights will face outwards to indicate that you are approaching the end of the runway but that the rest of the runway is ahead of you. One more set of lights you may see at the end of a runway are the runway end identifier lights. These are two flashing lights which face the approach direction of the runway to aid pilots in identifying the runway at a distance. Next up you have the runway edge lights which are a row of white lights along each side of the runway. Now if the runway has ILS capability then these lights will change to yellow towards the far end of the runway again to warn pilots that they are approaching the end of the runway. The next set of lights you may or may not see on the runway are the centerline lights. These are white lights which, surprise surprise, run along the centerline of the runway. Once again, at the far end of the runway the lights change to warn pilots. The lights will begin to alternate between white and red, and then in the final 1000 feet the lights will all be red. Another set of lights which you should be familiar with, which are used to help with landing, are the Avazi or Papi lights. Now if you haven't seen these before, I'd recommend checking out my tutorial on landing, where I cover the basics of those lights and how they operate. It's worth noting that these lights can be found on either the left or right side of the runway. Next we have the touchdown zone lights. So these are groups of three white lights which sit either side of the runway centre line. They begin at the runway threshold and will extend down the runway for 3,000 feet to help a pilot identify the touchdown zone on the runway. And finally you have the approach lighting system. Now there are various ways that this lighting system can be set up, but the general idea is that these lights portray an extended centre line. Now if you're interested in seeing the different approach systems, you can Google some of these acronyms and see how they're configured. Now most of these systems will have a feature called the decision bar. So this is a series of lights which extend horizontally at approximately 1000 feet away from the runway. This acts as a visual reference to help a pilot decide whether to continue with the landing or perform a go around procedure. Remember that in bad visibility, a pilot can continue the landing if they can see the approach lighting system clearly before reaching the decision height. One other feature that you may see is that the approach lighting system may contain sequenced strobe lights. These are basically flashing lights which appear to travel towards the runway. They usually begin at the start of the lighting system and will stop at the decision bar. So that's most of the systems that you'll see on the main runway, but there's a couple more lights that you need to be aware of. The first are a set of lights that you may find on a displaced threshold. Typically, these will contain red edge lights, a set of red lights similar to the touchdown zone lights, and multiple white centerline lights, which is in addition to the approach lighting system. A quick note for those of you who saw my last video, blast pads or overrun areas do not have any lights built on them. And then the last set of lights will be the taxiway lead on and lead off lights. These help a pilot identify a taxiway junction I guess you would call it. These lights alternate between green and yellow and will guide a pilot from the centre line of the runway to the centre line of a taxiway connected to the runway. Alternatively, they can also guide the pilot in the opposite direction from the taxiway onto the runway. So there you have a quick look at the various lighting systems at an airport. So hopefully the next time you make a night landing, you won't be overwhelmed by all the different lights and what they might mean. 
In my next video, we're going to be moving away from the runway, but staying on the ground. We're going to be looking at some of the other main signs and ground markings that you'll see around an airport and on taxiways. So, as always, thank you all very much for watching, take care out there, and I will see you all later.